Al's on. The mayor, he's on page 33. I keep flipping this thing. It is such a mess. Can I request? A2. When we meet again and you bring us a new one, can we get it in a binder? Because this is just killing me. I can't. It's, the pages keep going. Yeah. They're all upside down now. A2. A2. I should have been smart like Mr. Klein and kept it buckled up. Okay. 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 Page 33. It's my southern line. Page. No. I'm still working on it. I double flip. I'll, I'll get there. I'm, All right. So we've got salaries are simple. Uh, you know, I put 6% in there and uh, know that we're going with 5. So no problem there. Uh, one addition that I did add is a bump to admin assistant, a $5,000 bump. Uh, if you remember last year, I asked for a $10,000 bump to uh, bring her to market uh, for her tenure of service. Uh, that was cut in half to $5,000. And so I'm just asking for the other $5,000 this year, uh, taking it from part-time of of the uh, building's budget, so that's uh, so no new money, so it's all new money. Uh, all right, and that's it on salaries. Uh, so, I will I will say that uh, I would love while we while we're looking at it that we look at uh, uh, look at our maintenance and our custodians. Yeah, that, that would be a different budget. I don't want to make sure I throw it out there. What page? What is the net budget? It budget is on page 40 for county buildings and it's probably like A. It is A9. And A9 in the size. Okay. Uh, a9. No, I'm sorry. No, Not A9. A9. No. It is A8. I apologize. <clears throat> All right. So if we can look at that with the market. So if there is an opportunity to help them, I know they would appreciate it. But I have. Uh, I have a question. The custodians and the janitor we hired la we hired for the courthouse. When did they start working? Okay. The ones that we we added last year for the courthouse. Uh -huh. When did they start working? I don't have their exact hire date. It'll, it'll be there. Uh, you look at the latest one. I think it was September. It would be September 23, maybe? That's what I'm thinking. Or there's a January 24, I'm sorry, but it may be the first. So, so looking at the custodians, we the request the addition that you asked they were to be right. I mean, what have they been doing? Okay. Um, I haven't looked at it, so, so I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at, uh, you guys go to page, I'm looking at page five. I, I did it with, uh, Public Works Building Maintenance. Um, uh, no, that's not custodian. Where are we at? Equipment Operation and Maintenance Custodian. That's where I went through. Uh, so it's equipment, but I... Oh, this one. Yeah, oh, this. Yes, okay. 35000 uh, and then you have consolidated maintenance work, which is 42, which is a little bit above. So you're, I mean, you're you're in there. Um, your maintenance okay. workers are in there. With with the, I don't know, they, they look to be pretty close. Nope. Yep. That works. Your maintenance workers may actually be a, a little bit high. What are you looking at, Dan? And this may help Matt out a little bit. When you're when you're looking at them, 
the medium's probably usually like a seven to 10. The top end, like the, say if you're looking at 48, would be closer to the 30 year person on the average. And then at the far left, like a new person should medium in somewhere closer to that 33. Well, so I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the 42,000. That's 318. Is that what you're looking at? And it has IDT, so it don't have anything. So looking at 42 yeah, down that's, here? That's kind of, I mean, is that, I mean, that's down here? That looks to be about right. right. 42 yeah. about in range, yeah. So 42, but I mean, some are over, right? I mean, the, down here? The, the maintenance of the top group, they're all over. Yeah, they're, they seem to be. I'm going with the top group. I'm, we got a lot of public works. The maintenance here. are all 42. We're, we're, the rights. Yeah, your custodial slash maintenance work right here. One, two, three, four. That's it. That's yeah. where they're focused. Yeah, yeah. It looks like we're actually. But they've got some time, and but they got some they time, got some and time under if they got time and tenure, then they right. would be on the higher path a little bit. All right. Thank you for reviewing that. And then you got your bottom mm -hmm. one is your custodians, which would be probably the thirty-five mark there. That's about right. Mm -hmm. So, county buildings. No, we don't have time for that. I would like to. I would like to do. I mean, I mean we can talk about it when we get into there. I, I am to be consistent. I mean, I get it. I get it. Like, we We were talking about trying to get about to eighteen, but we'll, we'll talk about that one later. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll do that when we hash through here. And always remember these numbers are about a year old. So, but I mean, we're we're above. We're, well, we're either in or above. Uh, John, sorry, go ahead. Anything else? Anything else on this? Any questions, y'all may have. It's, uh... And then this next oh, budget after the last one. Oh, what, well, I, what, yeah, is anybody going to ask about the. Uh, what the what is the county building central services yeah. director? Is that? Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring Josh up. This is. Uh, this is something that Josh and I have been talking about. I'm going to get Josh to explain it to you because he does a much better job than I do. Thank you, Mayor. So what this is, uh, as y'all may know, my background before getting into county government and state government, well, that was in local government, um, where I worked as assistant town administrator for a municipality of about 50,000 people out of West Tennessee. And so one of the things that kind of, I don't want the right word, is shock. Kind of talking. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the, you know, one of the things that, I won't say shock exactly, but one of the things that continues to intrigue me, I guess, about county government is just that it really is fundamentally set up in a way uh, that uh, is, is much different than professionally managed organizations like that part of the government town or some other uh, jurisdictions across the state, very much frankly. And one of the things that really differentiates county government, I think, from a lot of those local governments, and Sumner County government in particular, I won't show why it's not all county government, Sumner County government is there's a lot of functions that exist for buildings and very, very, very important things where there is no professional who's assigned to actually be in charge of it. It just kind of is, is run, I don't really know how it runs, to be honest with you. And I remember having this conversation with Anthony Holt back back when he was in office, there's one of many things that I, we would talk about county government and that kind of thing. And he would always say, Josh, it's just how it is. You're never going to change it. You're never going to change it. That's how it is. So it's always been, this is the way we do it. So I, being me, I, I try every once in a while to push the rock up the hill and, and talk about different ways to do things. And so, I mean, I'm a big believer in elected, elected leadership. I mean, obviously that's, that's, that's crucial. That's, that's the fundamental, you know, uh, foundation of our democracy. But I'm also a big believer in professional implementation. And no offense to you all, but um, you're all politicians. You all got elected office, you're politicians at the end of the day. And sometimes, politi sometimes politics and effective implementation get in the way of each other. And you've been in office long enough now to see that probably. And so, uh, you know, what happens is, and what, what I've seen happen, well, when I started, um, you know, uh, elected officials being in charge of projects essentially day to day. Building projects, big building projects. I've never, <laughs> never saw that before. I've never, I mean, you go to TDOT where I used to work, uh, you, you'll never have a, you know, you'll never have a, a state senator that's in charge of a road project for TDOT. It doesn't, doesn't happen. There's a professional engineer or somebody that's in charge of it. Municipal government, same way. Right, right. And so usually that's going to be something that works for the city or the entity in one way or another and as an employee that's accountable. 
Um, and what that does is it ensures a lot of accountability across administrations because mayors come and go, county commissioners come and go, uh, you know, unelected bureaucrats, you know, on, on the one hand, you can, can become entrenched and, and, and maybe represent their own interests over the public's, but at the same time, when you're talking about policies and you're talking about effective implementation, having somebody that knows what the heck's going on is very important uh, when, when, when new leadership comes into office. And so, uh, you know, that, that direct uh, professional management of large capital projects is very important. Um, managing the staff day to day. Um, uh, granted, there are a lot of offices in county government that manage staff day to day. Um, but, but having a professional to do that, there's something to be said for that as well. And one other thing, though, that I think is very important, you talk, look at the planning commission, not to brag on the planning commission or anything like that. But the um, planning commission has professional staff that works for the planning commission. Um, has a complicated role, obviously, reporting to the mayor, but reporting to the planning commission and taking care of things for the planning commission. Um, the general operations committee is a committee here at, at the county that doesn't have a professional liaison the way that the, the planning commission does, or zoning appeals does, or any number of other entities do. And so having that, that professional to be able to go to, um, to make reports, to keep up with things, um, to, to, to know the technical details of what needs to happen, what can happen, what's legal, what's not legal, those kinds of things. I think the General Operations Committee doesn't have that at all. Um, and so what, what we're going what to put together here, and I'll hand this out. Oh, don't we have that one right there? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're going to So what, what, what I did was, and so, you know, when you're looking at, I'm a big, big believer in peer review. Uh, peer, peer analysis, what other people do. That's one of the things that my boss taught me at the time of college. Um, if, if everybody else is doing it, you're not doing it, that's okay, but ask yourself why. If you're doing it and nobody else is doing it, ask yourself why. It's okay. Like, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. But what I kind of realized pretty quickly in looking at this, because I didn't, I didn't really know where this stood when I started, um, when I look at our peers, and when I talk about peers, I'm not talking about Trousdale County. I'm not talking about Macon County. I'm talking about Williamson County, Rutherford County, uh, Montgomery County, Wilson County. Those are our peers, not Davidson County, because they're not peers. They all have this. So they, what the central services concept, it, it exists in one way or another. Everybody calls it something different, maybe it puts it together a little differently. Um, but but each, each, each county has it, and they have it on the website. There's a director, a, a professional that works for the county that, that, that you go to, with, with, that, that manages all this for the county commission and the mayor. So what I did was I just, just as information on, the, that's just from their website, showing me where all those counties have that position. And then uh, I, I took a look, I called their HR directors um, in all these different jurisdictions um, and uh, tracked down salaries, got them semi salary studies. Uh, Montgomery County and uh, Brother County both those salary studies. If anybody y'all want those at some point, I'll be glad to send them out to you. Um, and looked at what they make. Um, Williamson County, as one might expect, is, is up there at the top of the range, um, but, but at about 120. Wilson County is down around 90. Um, it is, is what their, their uh, uh, facilities director um, makes. Um, so there's some, there's some information there where I put the salaries those people make, or if I have a, a salary survey, the midpoint of the range is what I put, because it's a little bit better information. And so, uh, as you'll see on this sheet here, um, that's what all those make it. As I noted there, Sumner County, it doesn't exist at all. There is, there is no lack in Sumner County as opposed to those other jurisdictions who does it. And so this is just a conceptual word chart that I put together um, that, that shows um, what it would look like. Yeah, you should have. Uh, and so with this concept, of course, reports to the county mayor. Um, if y'all remember my word chart yesterday, um, uh, planning commission BCA or kind of these little things that, that tie into my position. Uh, General Operations Committee ties into this one, providing uh, the review body, basically, the, 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 the body that it reports to. Similar to how the Planning Commission, I work with the Planning Commission month to month, day to day, report to the mayor. Uh, this, this, this person would too. So the, the orange you see there represents a new position. The rest of these positions are existing positions in one way or another, um, allocating uh, presumably somebody from the mayor's office for an admin assistant. Uh, the capital project administrator is Ms. Northleaf, um, and facilities and grounds manager is the, uh, the existing staff that we have at the facilities. Hey Josh, I got a couple comments here. I know a lot of people will. So, oh man, so first off, 
I'm going to teach you. You are a very, you're an excellent professional, but man, you should work in DC. You make more money. <laughs> Seriously, like this is what guys in DC do, and you know, you know the deal. I mean, we're so you said it's, it's what it's what professionals do. <laughs> you, you said it right. So, um, this is a double. So it's Terry. You and I. This is not dissimilar to what you and I were talking about about having a PMO shop, right? I mean, it's just, this is a little different, but it's not. It's in the same vein. Um, well, that we have well, them. Let me, let me finish real quick mm -hmm. on this one. I've got a couple What's of a PMO project, shop? project management office. Oh, okay. Because we've got all this PMO project management going over all over the, the county. I don't think we have any actually happening. Well, though. you're probably not wrong, but it's being done I by can't some find it. people. They're not have it, and they have that was specially done. I, I get it. Like, I totally get it. And I'm, we are clearly several of us are already kind of going down this path, at least in thought. Um, there is a downside to that, though, and the downside is always long term, like the road to hell is paying in good pitches kind of thing. When we do this, you mentioned exactly what happens over time. Over time, bodies like this start to wash their hands of it, and you end up in a situation where, and I'm not saying I'm against this, I'm, I'm just I'm laying out both cases. What is the number one thing that I think anybody here would say that we really detest about government? And it's unelected people acting by fiat. We were just talking about one yesterday where we have a government uh, organization, Department of Labor, acting by fiat, which has caused considerable problems with our existing budget by raising, uh, by changing definitions and thresholds for exempt person and non-exempt status, right? So like, I get it that that's very different levels here, but it's the same problem. So the, the question is gonna be for, the, for us, if we choose to do this, it's not, there's not just, I'm not saying one way or the other, I'm only laying out that there is an immediate thing which I think where we will see immediate positive impacts. I have uh, Mr. Long to go to, to your point. Like, I, I have Mr. Long to go to, this body has Mr. Long to go to with, with, with a very professional uh, team that does a very professional job. You have Mr. Simpler with the, uh, with the legislative body. General operations doesn't have anybody to go to. And it's not, you know, you can say you go to the county mayor, but that's a, it is a bit of a different executive role. So the, I have no doubt that in creating this, <coughs> that we will see immediate gains. And I have no doubt that in four, two years, four years, that person will see a need for two more people. And that person will see a need for four more people. And before you know it, you have a very, very powerful body. Um, so I'm just laying out the pros and the cons of this. Uh, and that's my comments. Well, that's, that's with any, any bureaucratic model, and that's where it's your job to keep that in check. Uh, so I have seen in past minutes, because that's just what I do for fun, is read past <laughs> minutes. And I believe Mr. Holt put a resolution forward that had capital project management and reporting requirements, best practices, I think what he called it. It's been, a, it's been a moment since I've passed that up. It was probably late one night. But Mr. Holt has somewhere, we can find it in the resolutions, best practices for capital project management and reporting. So apparently he was doing something. I mean, it's not my. I, I got enough. I got enough committees. I'm not on general ops, so I didn't bring it and say, "Hey, somebody go do this work." I, but is it, are you sure it wasn't a long-term planning for maybe from GFOA that I put out? I don't know. Because there's actually a GFOA recommendation that we adopted. I, I think Mr. Holt. It, it was. I'm, anyways, what do we? I think Mr. Holt was doing this. Maybe you're saying he wasn't doing it well enough, he's too busy? No, I'm not saying that. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm sure I can, no, no, like, no, tell no, you. He's doing a bad spot. Well, if he's doing better, how's John doing? No, you know? I'm, say, I'm saying that. I mean, that, who I'm has been that, doing it? We've been what, here hundreds, what, what, uh, over 100 years. Right, Who's what, been doing right, it? What, what I'm saying is that. that we don't do it well. That, well, anytime. You, not, we don't do it much. The, so is the, the county mayor, there's nothing in the Constitution of the state that says the county mayor shall be an expert in building maintenance. 
There's nothing that doesn't, that's not a phrase that appears in the Constitution. Did Kansas you read what was under commissioner? Actually, it does. It says it's among other duties. It's the county mayor's duty to have the care and custody of all county property. That's right. I mean, that's, that's a right. statute now. That's right. The care, but care and custody is, I would differentiate is in that court. Right. I, I differentiate that in That definition that is in court. Right. And so, uh, you know, Anthony had his role in, in terms of the way he did things with the county buildings, and John has his. The next person may get elected and has never, you know, has never even put a roof on their house. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you can, anybody can run for office and win. That doesn't make them a, a, an expert. Who and did? So, and so, right. so who is that's who, who who's the pro project manager over, let's say, Liberty Creek, since that was our last school? I mean, that's where our big projects no, are. That's, that's, school. that's a school that's project. School. Right. School. right. I'm, I'm asking you, so what does their planning department look like? They don't, they don't have a... They have a yeah, project they, manager, they, they lots a, of them. Right, but now they have a guy. Well, they, they have, have a guy. Don't know who that is. Don't who that is. He has staff? Maybe. I mean, yes. yes. I mean, they've they, got... Yeah, I mean, they, they have... I mean, they've got the majority right. of our yeah. money, the majority of the capital. Yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, what do they like, do? When, when we run into asbestos issues or something like that in a building, we can call over at the schools and they've got a crew of guys who are trained up to, to handle that. You, you know what I mean? And, and so... They, yeah, they have resources beyond anything that. that Don't that, say that, asbestos in schools right. together. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so yeah. right, so, so they, they have they have a lot of they have a lot of resources. But basically, what, what I'm saying is is you know like the the, the the courthouse facility for example, right? That's that's a what a ninety million dollar project that that uh, fell into essentially yeah, Miss Norley's lap. She was really the project manager. Of that. After so we, we, was we that are, only after Randall? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, guys. We are a bit behind. Yep. Um, and thanks Chrissy, for reminding me. Are there any other thank you, Mr. Sutter? Uh, are there any uh, I I have some questions. Okay. I turn my I flip my page though, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If you'd like me to do them later. Um no, I'd like to know in general, overall, I'm just looking at pest control and I got to thinking, do we have Mr. Long? This will be for you. Um pest control. Do we have one contract for the whole county? Do we get the best buy on it? We bid those contracts to the is it just yes, one it. contract for the whole county? I don't think so. I'd have to go back and look. Or does everybody do their own? Is there any money we can make? I can't recall. We we bid certain ones, but I can't remember the sh if they're all done together or not. I'm talking about. Anybody interested in in finance trying to find us money and putting together one big contract for pest control? Well, I can tell you this. Well, Don's got Work, something. When I was inspecting homes, part of that was for termites and stuff. Pest control is an inflated thing. I mean. <laughs> Prices are all over the place, so you're going to pay. I don't know who that. I, th I think I know who they're using here, and I can tell you, I'm not going to mention their name, but their prices typically are going to be off at the top of the spectrum. Where if you, so Don, can you take a look at all our pest control countywide and figure out if we need so one contract, how we can say you're getting. I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 I know. We can look at it. I got it. Do we have a shredding contract? Do we have a shredding contract? We're getting like. No, no, we pay I, for it. no, well, I mean, it's a cost. I'm just wondering where it's at. Each office. Each office pays it. We have a shredding day That's in the fine. past, but there's not really a large amount of dollars involved. And then the shredders that we used at one time were actually for disc and stuff, and they had to certify them. So. I was just wondering if we had a, All right. a cost. Anything else? Cost of food? It's a job. I was wondering, did we go over what the maintenance agreements were for? I mean, it's two hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars. But if we don't have time, no, I understand. No, I mean that was. That was. Most of those are. I can answer. Yeah, I just want to know what it is. Most of them are for like HVAC. Um, or what all the gear or some of them. There's a whole group that we do here because we don't have an HVAC person. <laughs> right. Yeah, we have. One. Elevator. We have a contract with Comfort Group. Elevator. So it's. Uh, I just want to know what it was. I don't know. Oh, I guess there's like fire extinguishers, Force. elevators. HVAC. Um, so it went up sixty thousand. Yes. We added the new building over there, big courthouse. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. all. That, that was Makes sense. Big portion of it. I think uh, the mayor mentioned that to me. It was going to be going to come to the courthouse. Any others? What's this addition? Primary increase with Comfort Group Media Technologies. Go ahead, Bob. What's this addition of ten thousand dollars under legal services? Oh, I removed that. We need it. And there's the one in the other. There's actually another county court court. Circuit. 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 Yeah. Right. Anything else? <coughs> All right. Uh,
Thanks, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, okay. Uh, volunteer Fire Department. <coughs> If no one minds, I've got a real short PowerPoint presentation. All I need is a little cable thing that I see guys are me. It is not a problem. He had just stepped out for a second, I'm sure. Uh, either way. Oh, absolutely, my friend. I'm sorry, Mr. Hine. Can we get you this little table? Absolutely, Phil Stretch. I think, I think it's going across here, though. Yeah, because you pull that cord back around. You're on page 62. Sorry. I'm so sorry for this, but I know y'all like a lot of numbers, and I want to give you a bunch. Let me see here. I'll take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. Wonderful. I don't know where that slide came from, but it can go away. I don't want to spoil the ending. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, first off, thank you for letting me come up there and speak. I know uh, we don't normally get this much time for all of us, so uh, uh, I'll try to be brief and give you what I can. Uh, first off, you're getting some handouts. I think uh, Chief McLaughlin handed out. Uh, it's a couple different things. One is the contract that we've been uh, uh, curious about. We've been asking for a few months. You all should have received it in your emails already. But uh, there's just a, another handout because I know you got a little paperwork. Um, also, there's another copy of our uh, CTAS report. There's multiple pages in there that will uh, explain some of the benefits of funding us and the legalities of how you can fund us. I know it's been a question in the past. Um, and lastly, a couple slides from the PowerPoint at the very end that give you some numbers that I know y'all would love to see. Uh, also, I've been talking here for a few months, but just so you know who, my, who I am, my name is Brad Williams. I'm the full-time training officer at White House Community Volunteer Fire Department. I've kind of been railroaded to be the uh, representative of the Sumner County Volunteers to speak with you all about all of us as a collective. Um, I've been a firefighter, volunteer firefighter for 25 years. I was full-time White House for 18 years until I took this position. Um, also worked for Robertson County EMS for four years, so I've been around all the different aspects, full-time volunteer and city um, for this, and uh, uh, also very involved with Robertson County as well. So I've been around the block a few times with this. Um, my first set of numbers are, I want to compare Sumner County to where our funding is compared to other counties in our size relative to population. Um, if you look here, in total population, Sumner County has around 200,000 in the entire county. If you, look at the, uh, if you look at just the rural areas outside of city limits, we're looking somewhere around 68,000 people. That's a rough number, but uh, that's pretty close. I think that's also 2020 census, so it's a few years old. Um, if you look at our funding we've been getting, which is 450,000 in total, that brings us around $6.59 per citizen. If you look at that compared to some of the others, uh, that do the same way. I mean, you're looking already how far down we are. Macon County is the closest to us. They have an entire population of less than a quarter of what we have, and they're funding around the same rate. Uh, if you get in the bigger counties, I mean, excuse me, uh, counties that are closer to our size, uh, like Montgomery, uh, 260,000. So technically, your county population here is even less than ours. Uh, you're looking at, uh, uh, excuse me, $5 million. Well, they're running a whole county fire department with full time staff. So just to give you an idea of where we are compared to others. Staying along that same line, if we go even bigger to more counties that surround us, uh, every county here, we are third as far as lowest funded in the, with population. If you look at uh, Williamson County, is a little bit of an outlier. They are uh, 685,000 is what they give to their volunteer fire departments. They only run three volunteers, but that only goes to their day-to-day -day operation. The county themselves pays for every station, every piece of apparatus, every piece of equipment, every SCBA, all their major capital expenses, Williamson County pays for, they only pay for their day-to-day. -day. So again, you can just see the vast amount of differences, and this is the last page on your handout that I gave you, so you can go back and reference. Uh, see here, just so you know where we are, this is a real quick map of where our fire zones are in the county. Um, the little box is, of course, our fire zone. The big yellow box around each one is five miles, which is where your ISO rating really comes into effect. So you can see how much of the area of the county we are covering. 
This one, it's, it's a little harder to see on this TV, but this is an overlay of where the volunteer fire department serve versus your city municipalities. So the red boxes down here are your uh, city fire departments. There's Millersville, Gulletool, Hendersonville, Gallatin. And that's that corridor right there. Of course, the city of White House is up here. A lot in Robertson County and Portland is up in the top. With Portland, they have added a, another station since this was added, uh, but it's, it doesn't overlap very much. If you notice though, all the green that has no other support out there, especially on that northern end of the county, that's where there is no backup. It is just us. So there is no, if something major was to happen, well, we can just call Gallatin. Well, Gallatin's 30, 45 minutes away. But can I ask you, over you on the Macon County side, do they have a volunteer fire department kind of close to our line? Uh, they have some over that direction. You know, like of the west side area. Oh, of course. It's just not. Of would course, they our back county. you? Up? They would back you. Up. Yeah, we I, I want mutual citizens aid. not to hear that they're out there. Oh, of course. Way. No, no. I'm not saying they're not protected. I'm just saying there's no municipality right there. Okay. That's I just want to quick backup and a lot of full-time personnel. And just to overlay one more map, because I love maps. Uh, there's EMS overlaid with us. Uh, with those same numbers and again you can see the majority of your EMS stations are again in this very big corridor where all, a lot of your population is as well but there's a lot of areas where your volunteers are a lot closer than your uh, EMS service is. So uh, just to go along with a few missed opportunities we've had for funding last year we were budgeted 1.2 million dollars as a line item inside of the budget itself this was not a donation I mean it was a donation excuse me but it was on top of the normal donation you receive. Uh, one fire truck was purchased at that 1.2 million, cost $500,020, I mean, excuse me, $520,000 for Highland. After that, uh, uh, the $680,000 that was remaining went back into the budget. We never saw another dime of it. Oak Grove was given a new station that came out of the ARPA funds. And so the rest of that $680,000 that we had potential to split or use for other capital projects inside the fire department, we lost. <clears throat> so what, why did we lose it? You guys well, we lost it. You didn't. It went back into your general fund. Okay. But it's just it was decided that night uh, to that to happen. Don't let us spend it. Yeah, it just kind of went back in the general fund. Okay. Um, so the dangers of not increasing funding. Uh, we have of course been hit with a lot of inflation, just like everybody else has. Everything's gotten more expensive. The fire truck that uh, we use at my station where our primary engines in 2010 cost $250,000. We are buying a replacement for that at this time. It's costing $650,000. So just to give you an example of how much inflation has hit us. Uh, we've had some issues with uh, some local fire departments around us that are city volunteers. I mean, excuse me, city departments that have volunteer firefighters with them. Millersville had a political issue causing all their firefighters to walk out. Uh, because of that, now they only have one and a half firemen, and so their ISO uh, rate will probably increase. I mention that because if you have an issue with funding and a fire department does lose that funding or just can't survive on the current rate that they have, and they do leave, the ISO rate will go up. It's also going to hurt your EMS staffing, which I'll hit in a little bit. Um, one, oh, here it is. Once Millersville lost that staffing, they immediately had to put a supervisor at that EMS station. So instead of running the normal ALS trucks with two people on one ambulance, because they had no first responders there to assist them, for a long time they had to run free personnel. They had to run your normal ALS truck plus a supervisor on every call because they need that extra hand, which is what volunteer firemen do all over the county area. So if there's no volunteer fire service, then your EMS costs are going to go up because you have to have more hands on a call. Uh, Cross Plains is another example. They are a city fire department that is mostly volunteer. They just this year hired their first full-time uh, personnel that's dedicated to the fire department. Um, but their increase was, uh, their ISO went up to a 10 because of lack of volunteers and tra uh, training hours they were able to get. Which of course, a higher ISO means higher bill to the homeowner for insurance purposes. A uh, couple more dangers. Uh, the fire department doesn't have as much time as we used to to go ask for donations. We've got an increase of training hours that are required by the state. Uh, I know uh, in ISO again requires 220 hours just for firefighter training alone, plus 100, 100 hours a year for a medical training uh, to get your medical license, um, and all these other regulations that we have to go with. If y'all haven't seen the new I, uh, OSHA regulations that are possibly coming for volunteers, it is a nightmare of what they're going to request of us. 
that we couldn't afford if we wanted to. Uh, more citizens are requesting assistance. Our call volumes are really increasing. I know uh, White House Community Arts has gone up 25% uh, over the past year. Uh, and of course, EMS is needing more help with longer responses. Uh, because I've been doing this full time in the rural areas of uh, my zone for since November, uh, I have been on scenes for 15, 20, 30 minutes in Sumner County with no ambulance because of just how much they are having to pick up and how many calls they're having at one time. Um, and so volunteers, we want to fight fires and help people. We just can't ask for money and sit on the side of the corners uh, with our buckets and just hopefully somebody comes by and donates. So why we want to do this and why decreasing uh, your ISO rate, why that is so important, what this funding will go towards, um, is if the more funding that has helped to decrease this ISO will help uh, homeowners on their uh, premiums for insurance. So using this method, we are actually revenue positive for the citizens. You may give us $6 per person, or in this formula I'm going to show you here in just a little bit for our funding, you know, we're asking for uh, $130 per million in home values. But uh, real quickly, we're going to get that money back to that citizens on their homeowner's insurance and their premiums. So if you look uh, how we can lower these ISO ratings by replacing outdated apparatuses, because Sumner County firefighters have been really running on a razor's edge for so long, there are so many of us that have outdated equipment. Gallatin has a 30-year-old engine that uh, they're trying to take back together. Oak Grove just had one that went down that uh, it's no longer worth fixing because it had a maintenance issue and it's just too old to even worry about fixing it anymore. The value's not there. So we're having to get back up to date. Uh, we also can increase training hours by not only having more time to train, but also uh, more funds to send people to specialized training to get better at our jobs. And uh, upgrade to record keeping. A lot of our guys are still using paper tickets to keep up with maintenance records, call volumes, and all that stuff. If we have better records, again, ISO takes that an exam uh, for example to rate lower your ISO ratings because they know you're getting your stuff done. Uh, again, just that ISO rating and how it helped. Uh, in Station 51, as of 2018, or excuse me, Zone 5, we had around uh, 2,068 rooftops in this particular zone. Going, uh, uh, going from a homeowner rate from a 10, which is uninsured, just to a 7, which is pretty easy to do, that alone will save just my one zone $758,000 a year for all those premiums. So that's one small area in that whole map of the county. So just to have a seven, if I take that and stretch it across, across the entire rural area, we're talking millions of dollars, savings, just for having a fire department there. And a seven is a pretty high rate. If uh, we're able to get our equipment uh, upgraded, practice some water shuttles, get some tankers in service, we can get everybody down to a, hopefully a five. And we're talking a million dollars a zone for a million dollars for that small area. So the, the uh, amount of money we can save the citizens is quite a bit just for giving us a little bit. We're going to save them way more than you're going to give us. So a couple funding avenues. This is always the fun question for this group is how can you fund us? You don't want to get liability and all this, uh, all that fun things. I know the 50% number came up a lot last year. I think we've gotten past that finally. But um, uh, there's a couple of different ways. We're always looking for grants to save the citizens money and save taxpayers. We have federal grants, uh, uh, Tennessee state grants, even private corporations, firehouse subs will give us money if we are awarded. Um, homeowner donations, of course, we do mail outs twice a year, a lot of us. There's Facebook donations, PayPal's. Amazon Smile has a charity campaign that we use. So we really do take up every avenue that's out there to bring us money the way we don't have to ask for it or ask more from the citizens. But at the end of the day, it's all coming from taxpayers one way or another. It's either coming federally from taxpayers, statewide from taxpayers, or whoever's shopping at uh, Amazon and uh, Firehouse. Um, but also, one thing too is with volunteers, for every hour we're out there having to fundraise and run calls and do all these things that we have to do for the volunteer fire service, it's another hour away from our families. And I can attest for everybody here, we love our jobs, but I've missed birthday parties, I've missed Christmas, and all that, fighting fires. The worst thing in the world is to get off of uh, a bad, bad call or something and having to go out and beg people for money just so we can stay afloat and put gas in the trucks. And that is not uh, 
doom and gloom. That's real life. Uh, the national average of supporting your fire department from uh, your support, excuse me, um, a national average from support your fire departments give uh, in, on a, a national level from governments. So I know 50% was a big number here, but from the United States uh, Fire Department uh, Administrative, it says that 50 to 90% of all volunteer fire department funding comes from the government. 50 to 90. Tennessee's average is 80%. So again, just kind of shows you how behind Sumner County is in a lot of this. So uh, talk about the funding formula you're getting ready to see. Which so, I'm, I, just no, so go ahead. 15 minutes. Uh, well, we I had 30, one. right? You have, uh, we were at, we were, at, we were, we were a little bit old, but no, we were like five or six. Well, I started, I started at 5.30, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be 10.30. It's 10.30. Well, here's, we're, we're, we're trying to, we're try, we were a little behind, so I'll try to keep, can you keep, can you keep, can you keep it to five? Because we also need to ask you questions. Of course, of course. So I'm, we'll, the we'll, important part is next. All right, so let's, this, this yeah. is the money. So uh, uh, right here, the funding formula, just so you know where it came from, it was made by MTASC, uh, or CTASC, excuse me. It was made in like 97 or 6 is when we got it from them uh, initially. It is backed by a bunch of TCA codes, uh, so it is completely legal. There is no question about that. Uh, what this does, the way we've been doing it in Sumner County for a very long time, is you pay us per station. So if you have three stations, you get 24000 times three, you know, 73000 if you have one station, you get twenty-four thousand. Well, that's not the fairest way. Because you look by mile, road mileage and all these other things, we have as big a zone. Doesn't matter if you got one station or three. A lot of cases, but so we try to find a better way to do it. We decided that uh, uh, if we do it by this way, it goes by homeowner values in that zone. So if you have a lot more rooftops, you get more money because you're protecting more stuff. You're more densely populated. <clears throat> so again, property values how they've increased. Uh, just a couple examples here. Uh, the big ones, Cotton Town, uh, went from 70 million in 2018. These are current numbers for 2024. Now they're at 513 million in that little short amount of time. Uh, big ones like Shackle Island went from 237 million to 1.5 billion dollars uh, in uh, property protected in their rural fire zones. So that's how important our job is. Southeast, 147 million to 1 billion dollars. And again, these are verified by the tax assessor here in Tennessee, and I'll give you a copy of it if anybody wants it. Or here in Sumner County, not Tennessee. <clears throat> so here's the ask. I'm glad you're all sitting down. Don't get up. I don't want you to faint. Uh, but we're asking for $1,023,000 is the big ask. And that's about double what we have been getting. One thing uh, that we have had in the past is uh, $325,000 from uh, that goes in that donation per station. And then 120, uh, excuse me, 138,000 with a group effort. We have to come back and ask for, or want to get rid of all that and go to one revenue source. The way we figured this up is taking every station, taking your ISO rating that you already have currently, your property assessed value per million, times that by one, $130 per million is all I'm asking for. It's less than a Netflix subscription per house. We take the, the average in Sumner County, which is four hundred thirty-five thousand uh, dollars per home. Uh, again, so wait, wait, are you suggesting that you said a subscription? Or no, I'm saying it's the money we're asking for per government. I mean, for uh, uh, wow. money from the housing is less than a Netflix subscription, so it's just cheaper. Is what I'm saying. Now, we're not asking for a lot of money here no, in no, the grand scheme of things. You're not, you're not suggesting that that we begin a. Oh God, no, no, no! I'm just, I'm using that as an example. Well, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe that is it. I mean, honestly, I'm asking for. If you ask for it, we'll talk. But uh, what, what this is saying here is, if I'm asking for 130, 130 dollars per one million dollar evaluation of property in our area, so if you figure that up, your national average, like I said, or national average, your Sumner County average is 435 thousand per home. So you take a little under half of that, 65 dollars per average home in Sumner County. That's less than your Netflix subscription a year. I get it. So that's how much we're asking for. Um, but anyways, all those numbers together bring us to one million twenty-three thousand. All right. So, and so I got a lot of things where the money goes as far as new equipment yeah. and all, but that doesn't look important to you. Well, it, I mean, it is. It's it, we just we I don't have time. Know, I mean. Yeah, I'd like to be able to have folks. I actually kind of want to explore that. Did you mention subscription? Whoop. Is there precedent for that? I mean, I mean, it, what do you mean by subscription? You mean like so? There's a fire tax, which that's similar. No, no, I mean like a, 
Go ahead. So, you, one thing that's missing from your funding formula request that you guys aren't talking about is you move to a subscription based model, like uh, Blount County does it, and so does the city of Carnes and Knoxville. Mm -hmm. um, Blount County is actually a public utility, um, and where they get federal grants, the city of Carnes is subscription based. Uh, based on per household, and so if you subscribe, you know, you're covered. If you don't, you get charged a bill of a couple thousand dollars to respond. Um, I, I, I'm just wondering why you guys aren't pursuing this subscription based model. I mean, because that's a practical model. It is a practical model. It's not one I'm particularly comfortable with. Um, why, not, why not? Because if I went to somebody's home and I said, listen, you're paying your homeowner's insurance already, but I need you to pay me extra money in case you get a fire. That way, if we respond out here, you're covered. But if you're not covered, Hey, I've got to charge you this amount of money when we respond. You're because asking really, taxpayers to pay extra money just to. I'm asking for the same thing you are. I'm just asking about a different direction. Well, okay. I know, but that's what I get. Subscription, you don't sit there and watch your house burn. Yeah, well, there's, there's, and that, and, and, and as far as that's well, there's, a, there's a precedent, there is. Portland there's City a, used to do it. There's a precedent. Uh, Portland City did it for a long time, oh, but it's not I mean, as. So I have a so first off, you guys have responded to a home of mine once. There was a rental property I had at Redorney. There was a tree that fell on Redorney and cut it off. Did you ever find that appreciation? So I could that this pop pop in my head. I mean, I would pay that. I would pay that. Right. But. I mean, so I have a very, I mean, when I really think about it, and I'm, I'm just kind of exploring this here. So I had a rental property, this was a separate thing uh, that had just recently, there was a uh, cave in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to, I spent $10,000 to, to replace the, it happened right under the sewage line. Terrible, you know, just bad, bad luck. But I, there was, I had, it was an emergency. Mm -hmm. I had, we had water backing up into it. It was maybe not as bad as a fire, but I mean, I had to have something right. to take care, take care of it that day. I, I called a, uh, I called a professional. They came out, removed the water, dug into my yard, and they charged me $10,000. So like, you now they charged it after it was done. So I, I mean, fundamentally, Yes. I'm just applying a market-based principle. Absolutely. Fundamentally, I'm not saying that you would you would let somebody's house burn, mm -hmm. but you send them a bill. You're right, but here's the one thing: is because we are a nonprofit, we can't. If they don't pay us, I have no recourse. Yeah. And so if they if they, I come out, and you don't pay your bill, and so and I charge you five thousand dollars for whatever market rate is for FEMA, and I say, okay, you owe me five thousand dollars. Can I put your house up? And they go, I'm not paying you nothing. Then I go, okay. And that's all I can do. I have no recourse. You might have to change your, your structure. No building insurance. I, I can. I, I, the insurance only figures in about five hundred dollars for structure fires and all that stuff. And they they have and it's only some insurances. And it's only as we request it sometimes, but they have no obligation to pay us. And so again, what I'm looking at here is all these other counties and where their funding is and where Sumner County is versus the population. How far behind we already are? Sir, you have a period of First, we'll okay. and I know we, we're outside of rules. So uh, well, and then we'll go ahead. Basically, oh, I can tell you what. Do like the county says they we'll take the county sales tax, but not department. the rural sales Which tax. Which is the way we're doing it now. It's a utility model problem. that allows for this under state codes subscriptions, and then the other way is similar to Bradley County. Uh, which is the combination department, they have a millage tax on the county residents. So you don't have to be a utility department in well, order to do the, the No, we don't. It, it's just that's what it's for. Well, you're, you're one does, but that's the only one. You yeah. don't have to. So, yeah. so here's, the, here's the thing. Let me, let me, let me, let me okay. Uh, right. I was a firefighter in South Carolina for a number of years. And we did operate under a subscription basis like that. And uh, the fees had to be approved by the county and all. And originally, when I first moved down there, uh, there was no requirement. We couldn't uh, require the people to pay. And we even at one time, the uh, property assessor's office would, somebody complain about their taxes and they say, if you don't want to pay that $25, you don't have to pay it. We got them to stop doing that. We also worked with the county, increased actually put the subscription basis uh, on a set on a variable rate for lower property values versus high and also the county and I'm not there may be some different ones here in Tennessee laws in Tennessee but there again we've got to look at that 
we were allowed to uh, force collection. So I, here's, and I appreciate Rick, so you clearly have some, there's there's multiple ways to go about doing this. And I, here's my here's my take on it. So I, I've spoken with two previous budget chairmen and they both, you know, this is this is a continuing a continuing problem and it's only gonna get worse. Yes, sir. So I, what I would submit is that, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying no, we have a lot of debate here, what I would submit is that throwing it, just doubling your budget is, if that's gonna be a band-aid, you're gonna end up wanting to double it again at some point. What I'm suggesting is that this, we, we need to explore how to solve this problem in a sustainable way. Agreed. Because that's, that's what we're gonna have to yeah, yeah. May I say, say one thing about that, though? Yeah, real quick. Then we're going to get uh, Jerry, and then we're going to get uh, you, and then we're going to have to move on. Of, of course. Go ahead. But real quick, one thing I'm asking for is on this contract that I've handed out and everybody's seen for a few months now, I hope, is that's going to lock us in at whatever price we decide for whatever period we decide. So you're talking about if I double this year, I'm going to double next year. Using that formula that I was showing you a minute ago, that gives us precedent. That Well, come on. That says... Um, that hey, this is how we're figuring our funding from here on out. We're doing it for millions that are in that house, that area. So if you say that's the contract we go with, you say we're locking in on a contract for just say five years until the next round of property assessments. Then for the next five years, no, our budget is, I, up, well, is I, done. I understand, but I also know how things go. I mean, I, but anyway, uh, I do. okay. Uh, so I just wanted to share what Wilson County does, and I am not advocating this. I just want to share it so that y'all all have this. Uh, Wesley Robertson, I believe you told me, Wilson County uses the sales tax from out in the rural part of the county to pay for theirs. Now, we, we direct our sales tax out in the county somewhere else, yes, sir. but I just want to share with you that's what Wilson is doing. I'm not advocating it. just want you to know it. from the school department. It would move it from the school. It would move it from school. And I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I didn't want to advocate. I just want you to know what no, they're doing. Just, what we're talking about here is options. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Throwing another one. You know, I, I knew very little about this before I came to commissioner. And last year during the budget, I learned about ISO. Mm -hmm. And so I had just recently gotten a, a request from my fire, my volunteer fire area. So I wrote a check. For five hundred dollars, and you. it took them six months to to cash mm. it, and and so I had a conversation with that chief, and I said, you know, if the if the people just knew how much money they could save on insurance because of the ISO ratings, they would probably donate a lot more. Well, I, I wrote another five hundred dollar check in November, and it still hasn't been cashed. Which fire department do you go to, or do you subscribe to? Uh, Southeast. Southeast, okay. Mm -hmm. I call Charlie and get tell him to get his budget people on it, or his treasurer, because that's a problem. I can tell you, that man over there uh, at the end, my fire chief, when he gets a check, he cashes it within within minutes. But what what, so, I, <laughs> what, what I'd suggest <laughs> is you, you've got a great marketing approach. I do. That ISO is critical to the citizens knowing how much they can save in insurance. You but if I may, last thing, and I'll make, I know you're ready to move on mm -hmm. about that same thing. Is you were right. Now, if I was a marketing guy, and if I had the time to market, I can. But going back to this whole presentation and where I am, I don't have time to sit there and market and be on Facebook every day and, I mean, and try to convince people. Day, I mean, so. just like I'm having to sit here and talk to you and beg for money here, so if I go out in front of every home I have and say, like, listen, guys, y'all don't understand how important I am, then they're not going to do it. I mean, it's, it's a lot of time I'm trying to save so I can get on to the important things. That way their money is just saved. Yeah. Well, okay, so we've got to get going. Of course. 10 seconds and I'll, this is going to be the last comment. On this. Yes, sir. bottom line is there's maybe some options that we look at. I know y'all got the budget to get done. Is we've got to have more money to continue to operate. Whether it's one year. And then we'll look thank you so much. Or get these other options done. Thank you. It's a lovely presentation. Well, thank you. It wasn't, it wasn't great, but it was something. And it worked. I mean, it's, 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 it's no way. I appreciate it. I, look, you guys did it. You guys did it. It was a great presentation. Great presentation. I appreciate you guys coming to Karen. Yeah. Well, your workshop is 2.30, correct? All right. Yeah. I know you don't get to comments, but I will be here. Well, thank you all. And we'll.
I'm, I'm hoping to get get through everything in the workshop. And, you know, they don't have that. That's what I'm saying. Non-profits toward the end. We also have other days as well. So well man, I will be any questions. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All righty. Uh, Ashley, please. <laughs> Most accountable. That one. Um, let's let's go. Let's do Ashley's place. I'm gonna try to catch up. I mean, we're, we're behind. I should take real long. All right, thank you. Um, good morning. Um, I think most of you are probably familiar with what we do. Um, of course, Ashley's place is unique in that we are a nonprofit, but we are by state statute part of the investigative team for all severe child abuse investigations. So that's going to be child sex abuse, severe physical abuse, child deaths, and then some uh, severe drug exposed, depending on the age of the child and the type of the type of drug. Probably 95% percent of what we work with is going to be child sex abuse within our county. Um, that is the majority of the cases that are getting probably all or a good chunk of the services that we provide. When we look at statistically, one in 10 children will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. I always like to use a visual when we think of a classroom. There's about 30 kids in every class. That's three kids out of every class when you think of the number of classrooms across the county. 70% of all sexual victims of sexual assault, including those, sorry, that's what you're not at all. Um, Including those with adult victims, 70% of those of sexual assaults occur to children 17 and younger. That's a lot of kids. So as a CAC, we are providing a coordinated approach to those severe uh, child abuse investigations. We are providing the child forensic interviews. Those are recorded. Those can be used in any court proceeding that that child or that, or that prosecution our case, even in juvenile court, even if it's not from a criminal prosecution, but general sessions and prelims and our criminal court trials does not replace the child going to court, but it does put that child in a situation where we can show a jury that video with that child on the stand and they can see and hear all the details of that abuse without that child up there going through once again all the details of that horrific abuse that they have been subjected to. We're providing victim advocacy uh, throughout the investigation, throughout the prosecution process, court accompaniment, filing for victims comp, making sure kids and families are getting services that they need. We provide direct therapy services, prevention education out in the county. Um, we coordinate that, that CIPIC team piece, that TCA code, that is the Child Protective Investigative Team. We're the coordinating agent for that with our law enforcement, the DA's office, uh, Department of Children Services, uh, Juvenile Court is part of that, and then our medical piece, uh, our kids is out of Nashville. Uh, we utilize them for our child sex abuse medical exams. We are not asking for an increase this year, honestly. I uh, can't say that we won't be in a position where we will have to down the road, but this is not the year that we need to do that, and so I, it's just it's not going to do it. Thank you. Just let me ask this real quick. Um, I'm pressing everybody, but Pat, what do you guys, what's your current operating budget? How much do you have in reserves? Um, we have got. Right now, I would say maybe a, maybe a hundred thousand. I'll notice if you look at our budget, there's some one-time state appropriation funds <coughs> that's going to make our budget look a lot more than what it is. That's one-time funding. It's on there. It's kind of listed as like or like on the budget or should be on the budget. Uh, it says like SA two one SA three one. Uh, that is one-time state appropriation funding that is being used for uh, building much needed building improvements. So that's a big chunk of what's showing as our budget. That's not going to be, that's not direct so it's services. Not operating, it's not operating no, budget. That's okay. new roof, new siding, some renovations, parking lot stuff. Um, but that money, fortunately, we had gotten, and it's a one-time deal that we're able to get those things done uh, for the building and, you know, to continue to provide you know, so, so what percent of, of your operating budget is, is this? With it? So your operating budget is about $100,000 a year? Uh, I mean, our overall budget, when you look at we usually stay around like the 259 overall. Okay, so 259. Is what I, and then when you look at, when I broke it down, um, when you look at the National Children's Advocacy Center, there's a cost analysis benefit out there that say, says when you look at that team approach, it saves $1,000 per, per child, per investigation. So I took just even looking at Sumner County Sheriff's Department and looking at their number of cases. So last year they had 128 severe child abuse cases. So you look at that as a savings. If we're looking at $1,000 per child, that's $128,000. 
that you know that team approach, which comes from the Child Advocacy Center and the services that we're providing, you know, is the savings to that county. So we're asking for a very small that seven thousand, which as I said is not an increase, is a very small drop in the bucket, but yet you know obviously needed and instrumental in providing those direct services. Um, and that's not to mention even more importantly, I know the, the money is important and budgeting is important and we have to have obviously sound uh, budgeting around that, but just when you even look at the re-victimization and the psychological impact on a child victim when they're not having a forensic interview and they're having to be subjected to multiple different interviews, they're not getting victim advocacy services there being put into an adult setting in a court you know situation in front of their offender not having that court friend nobody else is going to be providing that except for us as the cac well, well I, I just how much of your funding comes from the state or other grants we have uh like two contracts with department of children's services in the state of tennessee that equal eighty two thousand dollars we're working on trying to get those increased because they've not had an increase in several years uh and our director of our chapter is working on that piece of it as well. Uh, we have 32,000 in VOCA federal funding. That funds my family victim advocate position. Um, one of the state contracts funds partially my forensic interviewer. That doesn't even cover all of her position. It's just a, a small portion of that. Uh, and then we also have like Memorial Foundation, United Way. Uh, United Way funds probably about 45 percent of our therapy budget um national children's alliance again would be considered federal that also goes towards some of our therapy budget as well and then all the rest is just some of our gallatin city portland city county hendersonville uh private donations some court donations and just kind of a hodgepodge of various various things. so i love your organization um and and i don't have any trouble i give you more money but I'm, I'm, I have two questions. Um, down in our, Mr. Long, down in our not allocated, we have some Ashley money also. No. Did we give some down there? No, the not allocated is for your charitable giving. Right, and, and I think we get, we didn't no. find. There was some I just COVID make, relief funding that we years had back. got a couple of years back. Yeah. Okay, I thought, that. and no, then. They're, they're considered non I was wondering if you have been working with our opiate board to get some money for, because I think that because of the children, that have you worked with our opiate board or have you met uh dustin what's dustin, dustin. have you met we need to we've got some money we if we can invest in education mm -hmm. then our opiate money we we have a higher return and also that's where i would like to see it going and i feel like we could do that mr long can you Hook them, her up with she Dustin. Just at he was here earlier. Really. He really. Yeah, he has all kinds of resources, but also looking at our opiate money. We get we're right now we're nine hundred and eighty thousand a year for the next eighteen years. We've got well not, not maybe, guaranteed, maybe not guaranteed, but sure. we've got we we might can give you some more money. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Dustin has lots of resources, and he's working to pull stuff together. It has to be opioid related. Well, I'm sure she's got drug I mean, related. I think a percentage, and that's why I'd be interested yeah, to talk to him to see exactly. the majority of what we're seeing is going to be sex abuse, and we do see. But if their parents were on drugs when it. Yeah. Yeah, somebody in the family. I mean, there's going to be a percentage. Work with him. There, he's he's knowledgeable. Sure. I just want to make that connection. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to talk to him. Yes. There, we might, there might be someone we can chat into. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the work you do. Thank you very it's, much. It's very. Any other questions? Thank you, ma'am. All right. Is that it? Yeah, sorry. Right. I know I'm You're good. Um, all right, so we, we skipped uh, archives, so we're going to have uh, archives come up real quick. And, and we'll go through them quickly. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's on page 43 yeah. in the salaries on the board, and they asked for the 11%. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Hi, I'm Bonnie Martin from the archives. I think a lot of you have wandered over there and wondered what we're doing over there. Um, I just wanted to point out that we have reduced our budget um, from the order supplies and also um, office supplies. And this is directly, and I, I pointed this out last year's budget as well, and we've reduced it even more so. Um, because we're using those special equipment that we got grants and donations for, uh, which cost the county pretty much nothing. Um, all of it came from grants and some donations except for I think a printer we had to buy and a monitor. So we're talking about almost $30,000 worth of equipment that we 
have gotten for the archives. Um, the only other thing that I'm asking for is an increase in salaries. And one of the reasons is that when you compare us to the other counties, and I think the closest is Wilson County, um, their last year's budget for their supervisor was $62,109. They just hired a full-time clerical staff for $40,788. Um, our clerical staff, which is Julie Kinslow, has been there for seven years. And I myself has been there since 2009 and full-time since 2010. So those are the really the big increases. And then, of course, I am asking for decreases in all the supplies and for um, owner. And that's about it. Any questions? Any questions? We'll, uh, we'll also have to, the, the new way they're breaking out the phones, we're going to have to add a little bit of money into our budget for the phone system. Uh, so I don't have that exact amount yet. Uh, it's been paid out of county buildings in the past, but with this new implementation, they're breaking down by departments. So as soon as we get that number, we'll be happy. Right now, right. yeah. Something yeah. you guys may want to look at when you started in the last year was putting all the funding to the department for the new yeah. general utility. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really a little part for this year. Yeah. Just like EMS, I've noticed that we'll go to the county building. Yeah. Probably need to increase the number of the EMS. Yeah. We're trying to remain. What they're doing at the radio section is like, right. 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 But you need to get the cost of the the just like the EMS, I know several things are still true. That's correct. Yes. Just like that. Yes. 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 County Bills are probably several things for the EMS. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. We'll talk about that on the next meeting. Thank you. I think the mayor may be doing the next meeting, doing regional transportation. This is the thing. Were they going to show up? The regional the RDA, they said that um, they asked me if it was required to come, and I said no, they preferred. Okay. And I, but Tennessee Rehabilitation is Where here. Where are they at? What page are they on? They're on page 79 of the, the Regional Transportation Alliance. And that's why I was asking John, because in the past, the mayor has presented right now if they will this year. Yeah. Well, I can, I can tell you what it is. Uh, and I was just texting the mayor of Hendersonville to see if they were participating. But it's a program that Gallatin and uh, City of Hendersonville and City, City of Gallatin, City of Hendersonville, and Summit County participating in. I've uh, been doing it for years. It's basically a bus service. Where's this at? Page 79. Uh, oh, okay, I see it. Where's that? Under contributions. Under contributions? Under contributions? Yes. You want us to bring oh. the actual request back to that next meeting? That's a whole lot of stuff we don't even talk about. Why don't we not talk about all this stuff? Oh, I see. Right. So there's, yeah, and then. Matt, if it's okay on the next meeting that you guys have, we'll bring this request where you can look at it in detail. That's fine. We fund a percentage, and it's based, um, I think Nashville participates too, it's a whole group there. That's fine. It's 61,000. Uh, yes. We'll have all the details. So, uh, so the Trans Alliance uh, uh, rehab, rehab Center? Oh, no, sorry, I was, uh, so we're at transportation. So they're, they're on page 70, they're right on the budget. Is anybody here from the rehab center? Yeah, they're right, they're oh, on the budget. Okay. okay. They're on page 70 of the budget. I think they're going to the building. Yeah, we can see somebody else, not us. Page 70, you say? Yeah. Under appropriations to stay. <coughs> oh, I see. Okay. Can you tell us where you're renting that building at from now? Where you guys are at now? Uh, the building, we've been out of it for a little over a year. No, no, where, where are, are you at now? now? Oh, we are in the American Job Center on Greenway. So that's oh. from the, rented from the state? or uh, We're renting it from the Department of Labor. Forward, forward South or no? Where that is? Yes. yes. Where that is. Where all that is. That new building in Green. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. All right. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm with the, the CTRC, the Community Tennessee Rehabilitation Center of Gallatin. Uh, we provide services to assist individuals with disabilities to uh, get and keep a job. The uh, uh, program that funds the 
the CTRC uh, has a 3070 uh, match, 30% uh, from uh, local government with a 70% match from the federal government. I think the question that came up last year was from Ms. Boyd was how many people you, you serviced a year? Um, roughly uh, last year between 40 and 50 uh, directly we did a uh, we hosted a community resource fair a little over two weeks ago uh, here in Gallatin uh, and uh, had a little over 30 uh, unhoused individuals come and uh, you know, get information and get assistance from the groups we arranged there and uh, several of them also signed up for both rehab services. Are your numbers different now than they have been in the past? Are they declining, increasing, or remaining the same? Um, it seems to me we're, we're roughly staying the same or increasing some, especially as well, one of my jobs is to get word about what voc rehab is out to the community, and uh, that seems to be getting out more. Uh, I mean, honestly, I didn't know what voc rehab was before I applied for the job. I had not heard of it, and I have family members who could have uh, benefited from it. So uh, that's one of the things that I'm trying my best to do is make sure to get word out, and I think that that's definitely increasing. Uh, matter of fact, that is one of our goals this year is to increase referrals and uh, uh, applications and successful closures. And you're mostly funded by the state? Mostly funded by federal government. Federal government? Yeah, the, the money from the federal government is given to the state, the and then the state disperses it. Okay, and, and what is your operating budget per year? Um, no, that's what we're giving. The, so the number that was uh, given to me uh, this year was 490174. Uh, That's a lot more than 21. The, well, the 50,000 that we're requesting is what was given to us last year. And this uh, is from, the, oh, so you're getting it, so you're getting some from the, from the county, some from the city of Gallatin? Uh, just some from the county. That's it. Yeah. So you uh, said it was a two to one. Uh, it's uh, it's thirty percent local yeah. Sumner County in this case. But seventy percent. If you got four hundred ninety-one thousand dollars, that's like a that's we're we're giving you like like eleven percent, twelve percent. The um, one one kind of rule that uh, the CTRCs have learned is um, asking for more may get us nothing. So last year, uh, fifty thousand was what we were provided. So that's what we're asking for. How many employees do you have, including yourself? Uh, myself and uh, Ms. Parker. Just the two of you. Two full time. How do you get the word out to the community about your services? Um, well, first, I'm networking with a lot of nonprofits in the area uh, through uh, the Southern County Collaborative. Uh, I'm finding any resource fairs that are being put on mm -hmm. uh, and uh, setting up tables uh, with information about uh, voc rehab services there. Um, I am trying to network with a lot of local businesses as well mm -hmm. uh, to find out some of them have uh, to, yeah. current employees that can benefit from it. Mayor, is this something we could advertise on our website? My apologies. That's okay. Is this something we could help them get out the word on our website periodically? Absolutely. Have you considered that? Uh, that would be great. I, uh, I mean, I've got uh, the information. I'll be more than happy to help you. Yes, I'll. I'll uh, I've we'll got get, a PDF I mean, we're paying. We need to get you out can, there. That would be great. That'd be wonderful. Mm. I mean, any, <laughs> anything to help us get word yeah. out because it's uh, as I've been working. That with might the be more valuable for you than the money we're going to give you. Free advertisement. Free well, the free, free advertisement ad definitely helps for, yeah. for both free advertisement. Let's do it. Historically, <laughs> how, how old is the program? Uh, I believe that the CTRCs were created in 1967. Oh, my God. The uh, law that was passed by the state legislature that year created CTRCs in areas that were, at the time, considered rural areas that weren't getting the services that were being provided in the larger cities. Uh, Gallatin was considered a rural area at the time, so this is where they set up one. Mm -hmm. Now that's also where they, uh, I believe when they started the uh, 
the funding, uh, how they set up the funding, and, and the likes. Great. What's your name? It's Chris Slater, S L A T E R. All right, any other questions? All right, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. All right, Friends Alliance. Chris Slater. It's Chris Slater. Chris Oh, uh, unusual. We're not sure. Right. Yeah. You're like, who's that person? Yeah. 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 Yeah.